Hey friend, Graham Cochran here and welcome to a very special video. I am launching a brand new podcast. It's called The Graham Cochran Show, which is kind of narcissistic and arrogant if you think about it, but is the best name I could come up with. So this podcast is live on iTunes, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, links below, but no worries if you're a YouTube person, I'm not leaving YouTube. I love YouTube. YouTube has got my heart. So I'm going to be filming the podcast every single week for you and bringing it here to the channel. So you'll be able to continue to enjoy content from me every single week. It's just going to look a little different. And so whether you watch or listen, the podcast is the same and you can enjoy it in any format you like. So this is going to be my very first episode, but I wanted to just give you a little heads up and a welcome since you've been watching me here on YouTube land. Like I said, links below in the description if you want to subscribe to the podcast wherever you like to consume that so you can listen to the show when you're on your commute or at the gym. Otherwise, continue to watch me here on the YouTube channel. Thanks for the support. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. It means a ton. And now enjoy the very first episode of The Graham Cochran Show. Welcome to episode one of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build an online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran, as this show is narcissistically and aptly named. And this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've been creating content on YouTube forever, and I've had so many friends say, Graham, will you do a podcast? Graham, will you do a podcast? And at the time when people would ask, I just didn't have the margin for it. This season in life, I feel like I have the margin for it. Plus, I feel like it's been coming. Plus, there's things I want to talk about that make more sense on a long-form podcast where I can just dive in deep and have a conversation with you and not have to have it be edited, not have to present it in a certain way, just be able to share what I feel like I've been learning, what's working for me. If you're brand new to me, I've got a ton of content over at GrahamCochran.com, but I'm an online business owner. I've been running the Recording Revolution since 2009, where I teach musicians how to record and make music out of their bedrooms and home studios. And over the course of a decade, I've learned a lot about online business. I knew nothing when I started, absolutely nothing. Uh, I didn't even know that this was a thing. I just knew that I needed to make money <laughs> and I was freelancing and I was starting this YouTube channel on the side. I had no idea how to monetize it. And I'll, I'll go into deep uh, in my story in another episode, but just know that I stumbled and fumbled for years until I discovered that there was a way to add value to people online, create an income stream, and that's what I've been doing. So I want to start off this podcast by being a little transparent and being honest with you. This episode's called The Law of Authenticity. This is such a powerful concept that will really, really help you. But before I teach you anything, can I just open up a little bit about how this has impacted me and how I've been struggling to do this? Um, let me back up a second. Last week, as of this taping, I was in Irvine, California. I was in Orange County at the Kajabi Impact Summit. Now, Kajabi is an online platform that I use to run my online businesses. They make an amazing product. If you're not using Kajabi to run your online business, you're totally missing out. So they put on their first ever live event and they brought in some of my favorites and some big heavy hitters, online business owners, marketing experts, uh, social media experts, a lot of great speakers. And it was a great weekend of learning, networking, connecting with other online business owners that do all kinds of cool stuff and just getting to talk shop, which I love. Um, learned a ton, took a ton of notes. I got a whole stack of paper right over here next to me with a ton of notes. And there's a lot of different opinions on how to do business and a lot of different perspectives, but there was actually a few commonalities that went across all the speakers. And one of those trends Every single segment from Friday, Saturday to Sunday of that weekend, one of the big ideas that I took away was everyone was saying you got to be authentic. When you're branding your, your business, your content, whatever it is, you have to be authentic. And they were basically saying like authenticity means being true, right? To the core of what it is, um, being real. And so, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, be real, right? Be authentic. Of course, duh, everybody knows that. That's good advice, right? Uh, but as the weekend went on, I started to realize that I don't know if I am being authentic. I started to think about specifically the my personal brand, Graham Cochran. I'm going to set aside the recording revolution for a second. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But I asked myself, am I truly being authentic 
and the Graham Cochran brand. And what does that even mean? Am I truly being true to myself? Now, what this made me think of was the absolute best book on business I've ever read. It's called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. If you haven't read The Go-Giver, stop what you're doing. Buy the book, Kindle, audiobook, real book, whatever. You can read it in like an hour or hour and a half. It's a short story. It's written as a parable about a guy that learns these five principles of success. He's a salesperson, so it's great if you're in sales, but it's very applicable for anyone who's selling anything, aka online business owners. I've reviewed it on my YouTube channel, so go watch the review. And uh, it's, it's a book all about generosity and how about selling isn't about taking or manipulation. It's about serving and giving. And there's so much application that's brilliant. There's five laws that you learn in this, this amazing book. Um, and I teach about a lot of them. The one that I have never taught on, and the one that I want to share with you here today and unpack is the law of authenticity. The reason I've never shared this in depth when I talk about this book is because it's the one that I glossed over. To be fair, to be honest, I was like, I don't, I don't get it. I, 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 I think I am me. I don't know who else I'm trying to be. Um, I think I'm authentic. But let me share with you two quotes from that chapter about the law of authenticity, what it is and what it means. In the book, one of the characters says that no matter what you're training, okay, no matter, like your thing that you're good at, that you do, no matter what you're training, no matter what your skills, no matter what area you're in, you are the most important commodity. The most valuable gift you have to offer is you. Can we think about that? We don't usually think that we're the commodity. We think our product, our service, if we're in the online space, our online courses, our membership sites, we think about what we actually sell. And when we're writing sales copy, we're thinking about the benefit of our course or our product. And we're like, yeah, this is the commodity. But in this book, the two, these two characters that are trying to teach the main character something and how to be successful are saying, no, it's not actually your product. It's not actually your service. It's you. You are the commodity. And then they go on to say, as long as you're trying to be someone else or putting on some act or behavior someone else taught you, you have no possibility of truly reaching people. The most valuable thing you have to give people is yourself. No matter what you think you're selling, what you're really offering is you. Okay, let's unpack this for a second. With my other brand, my first business, Recording Revolution, I understand this inherently. And this is what's so fascinating is I think I've been doing this well for the better part of a decade in one business and kind of missing it in another business. In the recording revolution space, what do I physically sell? Training, audio training, um, meaning courses, classes, membership sites to teach you how to record your music. You're not a professional. You didn't go to audio school. You're primarily a musician. You're not techie. You're not you know, a guy in a lab coat. You just want to make great sounding music that sounds so good that your friends think that you recorded it in a professional studio. Okay, I teach you how to do that with my online courses. So I sell courses. I sell membership sites. That's what I sell. But what I actually sell, and I know this because there's plenty of other people in my space that sell great courses and great membership sites on the same topic. Um, and a lot of them, full disclosure, are smarter than me. And I think more talented than me. And some of them have had more uh, success in the music industry than I have. More credits, right? They've mixed or recorded bigger bands than I have. But my business does so well because I understand that what I'm truly selling, what they're truly buying isn't my course, it's me. What is valuable in my business is my perspective on making music, the way I teach, my strong opinions about what you need and don't need in your recording studio, my strong opinions about how to get a great sound versus what other people say. You either like me or don't like me when you watch a YouTube video, let's say. And that's a very, very good thing. And, and a lot of people say, I can't stand this guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And then a lot of people say, this guy gets me and I understand the way he thinks and he helps me unlock something in my brain and I understand things better. There is something truly valuable about understanding that. And I get that in the recording revolution. I understand that I don't have to be the best. I just need to be myself 
because when I brand myself and my way of thinking, people resonate with it or don't. And then they buy my stuff and they get results because I truly have helpful products and courses. But honestly, it's me inside of my courses that are getting people results, not just the information, okay? But let me be honest with you. With the Graham Cochran brand, about a year and a half ago, I finally launched a YouTube channel and a, and a brand uh, to teach people everything I know about online business because I've been teaching my friends and family members offline in the real world for about three or four years now, if not longer. Um, and I felt that God called me to actually, you know, no, don't just keep it to myself and a few people. Build another resource, just like I did with the Recording Revolution. Build a resource where you just download everything you know about online business and teach it and share it. Because people need to know this. You need to know this. There's so much conflicting information out there. There's so much information out there. It's overwhelming. You can just get information overload and not do anything. Or you can see certain people saying you got to do certain things to grow an online business, or this is how you make money online, or this is what online courses should be like. And, you know, they might be speaking to a certain crowd, but I think honestly, a lot of it's a bunch of garbage, even if they're successful. And so I felt there's this, this calling here. I need to jump into this space, as scary as it is, and shed some light in a dark spot. Okay. So I started this brand. I've been uploading YouTube videos for a year and a half now as of this taping. I've launched courses. I've got one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm helping a ton of people. It's working, okay? It's working. Very successful. I'm, I'm happy, but something didn't feel right. And I, I, don't, I figured it's just going to take me some time to get into my, my rhythm and my, my lane with this new business. No matter how successful I am in the other business, you're kind of starting over when you start something new, figuring out your voice. And this is all normal, but something was... was irritating me and I didn't know what it was. And over the last couple of weeks, I was starting to get like a clue. I feel like God was revealing a little bit more about what it was that was bothering me. And then I go to this Kajabi Impact Summit. Everyone's talking about authenticity. I immediately start to think about the go-giver and the law of authenticity. And I realized exactly what they said in the book right here. As long as you're trying to be someone else or putting on some act or behavior someone else taught you, you have no possibility of truly reaching people. I think to some degree, what you see and what you've seen on GrahamCochran.com and all my stuff is, is a ver it's a version of me. Let's just say that. It's a version of me. So I think to some degree, it's been a version of me. But to some degree, it's been a version of me that I've crafted and put together um, that's a little inauthentic to who I truly am. It wasn't intentional. This is the scary part. I just kind of did it because I thought it made sense. Maybe you can resonate with this. Let me give you an example. For the first year and a half of this website being launched, if you went to the site, the big hero image, okay? The big image of me at the top, next to the headline, so you know, hey, this is Graham Cochran's website. It's me wearing a blazer and a button-up shirt, okay? If you know me, I don't wear blazers, and I don't wear button-up shirts, unless I'm on a swanky date night with Shay. I like a good blazer. A real man should own a blazer or two or five, <laughs> and it should be fitted and tailored, and you need to have some good dress shirts. Yes, but I don't wear blazers that often, and when I do, I rarely wear them with a button-up shirt. Usually, I wear them over a V-neck, which gets to the point. Actually, my wardrobe of choice is jeans and a V-neck, okay? I literally used to make fun of myself because I would get made fun of on YouTube for recording Revolution Land. People, I, this is when I talk about YouTube and I tell people, hey, if you're going to make YouTube videos, just be prepared. People are mean on YouTube and they're going to make fun of everything you say, but even worse, they're going to make fun of what you look like and what you're wearing. And I would always joke how I used to get made fun of for having a, a faux hawk for years and then people make fun of my V-neck t-shirts. I don't know why. It's a pretty standard male wardrobe thing. I mean- I'm assuming if you're a man listening to this, you might wear a V-neck from time to time. And if you don't, you should, because I think they're a fantastic wardrobe choice. But my point is, I'm a V-neck guy. Heck, I'm wearing one right now. That's what I wear. So why in the world does my hero image on the site have me in a blazer and a button-up shirt? Well, I'll tell you why. It was a photo shoot I did. I even hired a, a stylist to help pick out outfits. And I told, but I told the stylist what what vibe I was going for, and I I wore that because I was going for the professional vibe. You know, here I was running an online business, doing seven figures, but 
I start a new business, you know, teaching people how to do what I do, take their, their knowledge and build an online brand and, and break out of their nine to five and create income online. And I felt insecure. I felt like if I were going to do this for real, if I were legit, I needed to present legit. So in my mind, I was like, well, if I'm going to be a business coach. I need to have a blazer because I'm professional and I'm legit. So that made sense to me. And there's, again, there's nothing wrong with that. If you wear blazers, if that's truly you, then that's great. It's just not, it's just not me. It's just not me. Um, and it just felt like a disconnect. It felt like a little inauthentic, not quite me. Okay. Another example. Um, when it came to the content I was sharing and the way I run my business, I was thinking too hard about the way other business coaches do what they do. I, I, I've been cop, not copying, but I've been paying too much attention to other business coaches and looking at what they do, how they present. Again, insecurity. With, with my first business, Recording Revolution, I think I was blessed, and I talk about this a lot on this channel, I think I was blessed to have a lot of ignorance. I knew nothing about online business. I didn't follow any other online business owners. I didn't even know this was a thing. So in a way, I was very ignorant of what was possible and what was typical, what was best practices. And that ignorance was really, really helpful because then what I did was just trust my gut and try to help people. When you try to help people, yeah, you never get it right the first time, but you can't ever go wrong at the same time. You can always course correct and realize, oh, people like this, or this is more helpful, or maybe this format works best. But I had my head down. I was just focusing on helping people. I wasn't focused on copying what other people were doing, I, or I wasn't being subconsciously influenced by what other people were doing. I was completely me, sharing what made sense to me, helping the type of person that I know I can help. And I was honest, and I was authentic. And that helped me grow. Still helps me grow to this day. I don't have to try hard. I'm being authentically me. Some people think, oh, isn't it just a shtick that you're putting on Graham? You know, you talk a lot about using budget equipment and how you can get great recordings with less money. No, it's not a shtick. It's exactly what I believe and I teach the way I, I teach my real friends. I didn't carry that over to this other business. I kind of was a little timid, again, insecure. Good old fashioned imposter syndrome. Who am I to do this? You know, even with the success I've had and on my right, my right mind, on my best days, I know I can teach this and I have every right to teach this and I know I can help people because I have still... I get nervous. I get insecure. So that manifests itself in wearing a blazer and a button-up shirt, paying way too much attention to what other people are doing, the kind of content they're making, um, the type of videos I'm supposed to make. Goodness gracious. I felt like because other people on YouTube were putting all kinds of amazing memes and funny cut-ins and all kinds of cool graphs, I felt like I got to do the same thing. Now, it was fun. I made some cool videos. There's nothing wrong with that. But so much energy was focused on like what I felt like I was supposed to do because it's what other people were doing as opposed to being authentically me. You know what's authentically me? This. This. Talking to you. This is one reason why I started the podcast. Because what's authentic to me in this space is turning on a microphone and just dropping truth bombs. And that's what this show is. The Graham Cochran Show is nothing but truth bombs, will be nothing but truth bombs, because I don't have time to play games. You don't have time to play games. Look, I don't know if you're stuck in a job you hate, like I was, selling radio advertising, Clear Channel Radio in 2005. I hated that job, partly because I sucked at it, partly because I had to wear a shirt and tie and sit at a, a desk um, and, and sit in front of a computer and try to go out and find business, partly because I wasn't passionate about the product. I didn't believe in radio advertising. No offense if you're in radio advertising. Um, I just didn't believe in it. It's hard to sell something you don't believe in. It's hard to work in an environment that you feel like you're a fraud in. Um, it's hard when there's pressure to perform and then a boss breathing down your neck. I hated that. Maybe you're in that situation and you're like, Graham, I want to start an online business because I know, and you should know this, that an online business is the best kind of business to be able to, if you get it running, leverage your time and your knowledge, okay? You want not only to make good money, but I know that's not the main thing you want. I talk to people like you. I know what you want. You want flexibility. You want to be able to pick up your kids from school. 
Like I get to pick up my kids from school every day or take them to school, get to take them to school every day. You want to be able to be home for dinner. You want to be able to take Fridays off. Look, I take every Friday off, okay? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three-day weekends every single week. Or you want to just be able to work half days. Or you want to be able to take vacation days whenever you want. That's one thing I hated about being in the corporate world. I worked for a software company for three years. Cool company, easy job, cool job. But PTO are three of the worst letters in, in the English language. Paid time off. I hated that. I hate hated having a fixed number of days where I was allowed to take off. Like, here are your 10 days a year outside of weekends and holidays. Is it only 10 days I can go on vacation or be sick or go to the doctor? or run an important errand, like that's, that drove me nuts. So I don't want that for my life. Maybe you don't want that either. You want to be free to be able to just take a week off or two weeks off. Or like last summer, I took my family over to France for a month. I was over there for six weeks, but we were over there as a family for a month, just traveling around and living like the French or trying to. <laughs> when you own your own online business, you can do that. You have flexibility. So that's a big thing you want. Another thing you want is to be able to do work you really enjoy and really care about. And that goes back to this whole thing about being authentic, okay? To be authentic, you have to build and create things that you genuinely believe in and help people that you truly want to help. And honestly, I want to help you grow, start, expand, maximize an online business. Online business has changed my life. It's changed my family's lives. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me in my professional career. And this is the best time to have an online business, period. So that's what this podcast is for. That's what the Graham Cochran Show exists to do. So let me ask you, if we talk about the law of authenticity, what is unique about you? What do you know? What skills do you have? What, what topic do you know a lot about? You don't have to be an expert on, but what do you know a lot about? What have you helped people do? What's uniquely you? For me, it was music. Not just how to play it, but how to record it. Not just how to record it, how to help other people know what to buy, clear through the confusion, and know what to do first, second, and third to get started and to make good recordings. To me, that didn't seem like that big of a deal, but if I stopped and thought about it, that was pretty unique because not everybody I know knows how to do that, especially even musicians. A lot of musicians I know didn't know how to do that. I knew how to do that. So that was unique. What's unique to you? What about your personality? What's unique about your personality? You're, are you quirky? Are you dorky? Are you boisterous? Are you funny? Are you introspective? Be 100% you. When I think about me and my personality, I'm an encourager. That's what I like to do. I like to encourage people. I like to motivate people. I like to help people get unstuck, okay? I'm not a technical person, okay? When it comes to online business, I yeah, I love marketing. I love copywriting. I love, I love like when those things work well, like email funnels. But you know what? I don't really get off on all the technical stuff because I've learned that you only need to really get 80% of the way there and you can knock it out of the park. What I love is helping people like you get unstuck, get off the couch, and build an online business to change your life. Because if someone like me who knew nothing, had no support group, had no podcast to listen to, had no YouTube channel to follow, no clue as to how to make money online, if I could figure out how to do it, and if it changed my life, and I'm not going back, then I want to help you do the same. So what about your personality? What about your opinions? This is huge if you're doing any kind of content online, and you need to make online content if you're doing an online business. What strong opinions do you have in your field? What do you stand for that other people disagree with? What do you stand against that other people would find shocking? I don't think you need to be a shock jock, but like, don't play it safe. Don't be vanilla. Okay, in the recording revolution space, there are some topics that I will just go after and, and challenge conventional wisdom if I disagree with it. Not just to start a conversation, but because I genuinely disagree with it. I want people to know that they can think totally differently. The, 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 all the herd says you got to buy $1,000 microphones, and I'm going to be the guy telling you, you can get just as good of a recording with a $100 microphone. People don't like to hear that, especially if they've spent $1,000 on the microphone. Okay? But it's true. You don't need a $1,000 microphone. 
So I'll say stuff like that because it's provocative, because it's a strong opinion I have. I'm not making it up. I'm not just trying to get YouTube views. I genuinely believe this. So what do you genuinely believe in your niche that some people might find controversial? What about your unique experience, your unique story? For me, I was on food stamps for 18 months trying to figure out how this whole online business thing worked, hating my life, scared to death, awkward holidays when you had to go see family and they're asking you if you've gotten a job yet and you say no because you're blogging about audio and recording. Awkward. But you know, that's part of my unique story. God got us through some crazy stuff. And at the end of it, he showed me that there's an amazing platform for me to teach and share. And he's able to help me build this incredible business and this incredible lifestyle. That's my unique experience and story. Didn't start out that way. But part of my story is moving and losing a job during the recession and having a mortgage and having a baby and stressing out. That's part of my story. It's part of my experience. What about you? What about your experience? Can you share to make your brand or your business authentic? All of these things are uniquely and authentically you. They can't be copied. They're not generic. They're very specific. And they're you. And these are the things that people connect with. You are the commodity. You are the thing people want. You are the thing that's actually valuable in your business, especially with online business these days because of social media, because of tools like podcasts or YouTube. We are the face of our brands. Even if our brand isn't just us, we need to bring out that authentic part of us to truly connect with people. And this is good because it takes the pressure off you needing to be slick and you needing to be a guru or you needing to have it all together. Dude, I don't have it all together. I'm figuring this stuff out. That's this podcast. I didn't start with knowing I'm going to do a podcast. No. I I wanted to do YouTube videos because that's what I was good at. But you know what? Now I'm going to add a podcast to the mix because people have asked me for it. And I feel like I can be truly authentically me if I do the podcast. So I'm pivoting. I'm adjusting. I'm learning as I go. This is an ongoing process. There's a lot of freedom when we just stop trying to be what we think we're supposed to be in our industry, our niche, or stop trying to be what we see other people being. We could be inspired by other people, but who are you? What is your authentic story? Can you bring that out a little bit more in your marketing materials, in your emails, in your website, in your copy, in your images, in your content? If you do, you'll connect with more people. You'll probably grow your business. The Law of Authenticity, two things for you. Go read The Go-Giver, game-changing book. It's incredible. Go read it, listen to it on Audible, whatever you like to do. I don't really care. I can't recommend that book highly enough. And then two, my friend, would you do me a favor? If you have enjoyed this episode, if you have enjoyed any of the content I'm putting out, will you go to iTunes and leave me a review? Please, please, please rate the show. Leave me a review. A, so I know that you care, because if nobody cares, if nobody's listening, I'll stop, okay? But B, it'll help me out, get the word out on the show. Every single week, I'm going to be dropping a new episode to talk about online business, successful mindsets, work-life balance, how to start and grow your business, create an income stream so you can actually do work you care about, work less, because hello, I don't want to be working more as the years go on, I want to be working less, and truly live more, and guess what, be able to give more of yourself and your time, and your energy to the people you care about because you're not drained from your nine to five. So if that's something you want to hear more of, if you want the show to continue, please do me a favor, go to iTunes right now and leave me a review. Okay, that's it for this episode. More of them at iTunes or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Also, all the show notes and links and everything is at grahamcochran.com so you can keep up with the show there or watch it on YouTube if you like that thing. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of the show. I'm going to see you on another episode real soon.